Witch Hazel is Disney's small and feisty trickster? Or is that Looney Tunes large and zany villain? Or is that little Lulu's tall and slender sorceress? However you see her, Witch Hazel, or the many variants of her, is a deep cut curio from the annals of cartoons. A character who by technicality was allowed to drift through various studios in numerous iterations without legal dramas or canonical ramifications, while spawning several other knockoffs along the way. Did Chuck Jones and Warner Brothers steal her from Disney? Did Disney steal her from Little Lulu? Did Little Lulu steal her from an obscure 1930s MGM cartoon? How did any of this even happen in the first place? All will be revealed when we explore the wild and wacky history of one of the most bizarre characters in all of animation. In this very special Frankenstein edition of Cartoon Evolution and Explaining Disney. By the 1950s, Disney was slowing production on cartoons. Within two years, both Mickey Mouse and Goofy, staples of the Disney roster for two decades, would be retired altogether. To bulk up their output slightly, Disney were producing a number of cartoon specials. Somewhat similar in style to their earlier silly symphonies, these one-shot shorts focused on stronger narratives and usually featured one and done original characters instead of studio stars. At this time, Jack Hanna's unit, who headed a vast majority of post-war Donald Duck cartoons, began work on a Halloween-themed short starring Donald and his triplet nephews, Huey, Dewey and Louie. At the time, seasonally-themed shorts were uncommon, with the studio usually steering clear of anything that could be seen as irrelevant at any point, or which alienated part of its audience. However, there was something special about Trick or Treat. As animation historian J.B. Kaufman noted, some in the studio took note of its unusual seasonal appeal and began to eye it as something out of the ordinary. Then advertising executive Card Walker certainly noticed that the short, as well as its accompanying title song, had good commercial possibilities for a Halloween release and heavily considered branding it as a special. Despite this, he ultimately decided to release it as a standard Donald Duck cartoon, though adamantly made sure the studio had it ready for a Halloween release to fully capitalise on its potential. The cartoon sees the triplets trick or treating at Donald's house on Halloween Eve. Being the party pooper that he is, Donald chooses Trick and pranks his nephews by putting firecrackers in their candy bags and dousing them in water. Leaving glumly, the trio are approached by an elderly enchantress who introduces herself as Witch Hazel. Because they are gracious towards her, show her no fear and express a belief in witches, she agrees agrees to help them get their treats. However, when Donald disrespects her, she goes to all-out war against him, determined at all costs to use all the magic at her disposal to make him hand over the candy. She was, of course, a brand new character created specifically for the cartoon, likely as a one-off, and her name was a pun on the widespread North American shrub, the Witch Hazel, popularly used in herbal medicines and alcohol rubs. Legend also suggests that she may have been named after Hazel George, a longtime Disney studio nurse, Walt's personal physician, and prolific studio songwriter. Animator Floyd Norman said, All of us young guys affectionately called her Witch Hazel because of her gruff exterior. Actually, she was a sweetheart who worked at keeping us healthy, strong, and productive. Given that Norman came to work at Disney in the late 50s, it's likely the name was given to her in retrospect. The cartoons Witch Hazel appeared as a short, light-skinned old woman with a hunched back, a bulbous red nose, a protruding hairy chin with a large mole, and a long blonde wig. She was dressed in typical witchy garb, complete with a great pointy hat, a long black robe, and a sentient broomstick named Beezlebub. To voice the character, Disney hired soon-to-be legendary voice artist June Foray, who'd lent her voice to a number of Disney productions already, most notably 1950s feature film Cinderella. When the cartoon released in October 1952, regardless of its standard branding, it was given a full-scale promotional campaign. The title song, sung by the Mellow Men, was pushed into the pop charts. Carl Barks, writer of the Donald Duck comics, was tasked with writing a heavily expanded 
print adaptation, which he crafted only by viewing storyboards, and RCA Records was commissioned the production of an audio adaptation written by the cartoon's head of story, Ralph Wright, which released in a lavish two-disc vinyl storybook collection and starred not only Clarence Nash as Donald, but Foray as Hazel and narrator. Thanks to the cartoon's huge promo sweep, it became easily one of the most popular Disney releases of the era. The cartoon was immediately solidified as one of Donald Duck's greatest ever, the song was an instant Disney classic, and the newly introduced Witch Hazel an immediately recognisable character, certainly helped by Barks's comic adaptation which increased her role enormously. So much so, publishers ended up scrapping entire sections of it in its initial printing, not restored for decades. In 1953, the short even got a re-release in now lost theatrical package feature Walt Disney's Halloween Hilarities, alongside a handful of spooky Disney cartoons. The short was naturally the film's headliner and featured predominantly in its marketing. Trick or Treat made such an impact in fact that it caught the attention of Chuck Jones over at the Warner Brothers Cartoon Studio. At the time, the Warner animators were constantly looking for new adversaries for Bugs Bunny, with his decade plus rivalry with Alma Fudd growing stale. Quite taken by Witch Hazel, Jones was inspired to introduce a witch as Bugs' next opponent. However, quite fond of punny names, Jones didn't want just any old witch, he wanted Witch Hazel. She would seemingly fit quite well alongside his recent creations, the evil scientist and his orange hair monster, Gossamer. Only two years later, Jones introduced his own witch hazel in 1954's Bugs Bunny cartoon, Bewitched Bunny, a parody of the Hansel and Gretel fairy tale. Despite retaining her name, Jones's witch hazel took on an entirely different look, one that was heavily stylized, scruffy and zany, in keeping with the other crazy Looney Tunes. This witch hazel was large and hefty, with a gigantic curved nose, a large bulging chin, a singular tooth and green skin, likely inspired by the Wicked Witch in MGM's 1939 feature The Wizard of Oz. She was fitted in a dark turquoise dress, a dishevelled black hat and thin high heeled boots over her twig like legs. She also had long scraggy black hair filled with displaced hairpins. Jones was quite fond of this gag, explaining in his autobiography, Hazel's hovering hairpins were in fact a personal statement from me to the penny pinchers at hanna Bar Bearer, who would have their characters leave only little linear worlds in the air when they zipped out at speed. I thought that if you were going to leave something, it should be something interesting. Her personality was entirely overhauled as well, now billed exclusively as an eccentric evil villain. For this version, Jones hired Warner regular B. Benaderet for the voice, though one can certainly hear the influence of Foray's vocalisation. It's been suggested that Jones originally approached Foray for the role, but she she turned it down, confused and concerned that he was simply stealing a Disney character, or in her words, taking a character out from under Disney's nose. She later said, I thought, how in the hell are they going to do that? Disney owns it and they're so litigious, but Chuck just went ahead and did it. Of course, Jones was able to do so because Witch Hazel, as the name of a plant, which had already been used on scores of commercial products, simply couldn't be copyrighted. In fact, in fact, Disney weren't even the first to use the Witch Hazel gag. That claim goes back to MGM's 1936 Happy Harmony short, Bottles, where a bunch of anthropomorphic medicine bottles plan to kill a pharmacist. One bottle, labelled Witch Hazel, grows sentient and turns into a literal witch. Additionally, Marge's Little Lulu comics had also introduced a character named Witch Hazel in a 1951 comic. While the Disney cartoon was then in production, Little Lulu beat it to the punch. Little Lulu's Witch Hazel would also become an incredibly long-running character until the comics end in 1984. Jones did, however, secure Foray for his next Witch Hazel short two years later, 1956's Broomstick Bunny, 
Disney, her first project for Warner Brothers leading to a decades long partnership. With Disney not having used the character in a cartoon for almost five years, and with Warner's having got away with using her two years ago, one would assume Foray now felt more reassured with taking the role. The cartoon sees Bugs dressed as a witch trick or treating on Halloween Eve. Opening the door to him, Hazel thinks he is an actual witch and grows insanely jealous of his ugliness, wishing herself to be the ugliest one of all. Inviting him inside for tea, she plans to secretly feed him beauty enhancers, but when she discovers he's actually a rabbit, all hell breaks loose as she attempts to kill him for her witch's brew. Here, Jones and Foray ran wild with the character, now placing her in a wholly original cartoon and not a parody, one which allowed her to be exhibited in her wackiest and zaniest portrayal as she goes head to head with the madcap Bugs Bunny. While Jones's characterization was clearly different to Disney's, Foray still wanted to distinguish her even further by giving her a different vocalization, saying, the witch Hazel that I first did at Disney had a bit of a British accent, but witch Hazel at Warner was all American. Go bottle, tail of coat, uh, whiskers from the billy goat. Like it? Why, it's absolutely hideous. Of course, on first listen, the two characters sound almost identical, even sharing Foray's now iconic cackle. <laughs> Her design was slightly altered here too, appearing in a cleaner animation and now given purple eyelids and a lighter green complexion and dress colour. Also in 1956, Foray portrayed another witch in MGM Tom and Jerry cartoon, The Flying Sorceress. While this witch, a more realistic angular character, is commonly misattributed the Witch Hazel name, she is just a generic unnamed witch who causes trouble for Tom after he wanders into her house. It is clear, however, that the character was heavily inspired by the Warner Witch Hazel, given her green skin and the fact that Foray gave her practically the same voice. Stealing a ride, eh? Well, I'll give you a real ride. Another actual Witch Hazel did turn up in a 1958 Famous Studios Casper the Friendly Ghost cartoon, Witch is Witch. This character, who only briefly appeared, was seen as a child witch, whose best friends and roommates with Wendy the Good Little Witch, a recurring character in the Casper cartoons and comics. By this point, Witch Hazel had become an industry-wide running gag. According to Foray, Chuck Jones fell in love with Witch Hazel, and it wasn't long before they returned turned to her once more in 1959's A Witch's Tangled Hair, where she was used to portray the witches in William Shakespeare's Macbeth. Of course, she engages in another gag-laden battle of wits with Bugs and even competes against him in a laughing contest. In 1960, Hanna-Barbera jumped on the witch train, introducing their own Winnie Witch in the Huckleberry Hound show's Yogi Bear. While Winnie appears as a generic witch with green skin and a flying broom, it's incredibly clear that Hanna-Barbera were inspired in some way by Hazel, particularly when we look at the title of the cartoon, Bewitched Bear. Bear. Very, very similar to the Warner Hazel's debut, Bewitched Bunny. Also in 1960, Disney finally returned to their Witch Hazel in The Mad Hermit of Chimney Butte. With Disney having jumped out of theatrical cartoon shorts by the middle 50s, this extended near hour long cartoon was a made for TV effort, screened on the Walt Disney Presents anthology series. The cartoon, which sees Donald as an eccentric hermit moving from town to town, attempting to find some peace and quiet, was directed once more by Jack Hanna, and was mostly compiled from 40s and 50s Donald Duck cartoons. However, the special did include around 10 minutes of newly animated linking segments, one of which saw Donald travelling into a ghost town where Witch Hazel is one of the many spooky residents. Tricking him into thinking she's just a regular old maid, Hazel sells her haunted house to Donald, promising it to be a nice, quiet neighbourhood. For a once again 
again returned to the role, this time making sure that Disney's Hazel's British accent was well pronounced. While this was Disney's only other classic era cartoon usage of Hazel, she did continue to live a fruitful life in comics, where she was most predominantly seen in European publications, particularly from Italy, where she was known as Strega Nocciola, or Witch Hazelnut. Her first international comic appearance, in fact, was in a 1952 Italian Mickey Mouse or Topolino comic, where she remained a regularly recurring character, predominantly throughout the 1960s to 1990s. She also appeared in a number of Italian Donald Duck or Paparino comics. She also began appearing in an incredibly long-running series of Italian goofy comic stories by Luciano Botaro, printed across Europe. In the Pippo e le Fatokera stories, Goofy is constantly seen aggravating Hazel thanks to his staunch disbelief in witches and magic. Though she continually attempts to prove both are real, utilising numerous spells and enchantments, Goofy remains convinced that she's simply a crazy old hag doing fake magic tricks. This run of stories came to an end in 2005, with Goofy finally signing a declaration that he's a believer, before revealing to the reader in a final twist that he only did so to make her happy. Animation and Disney comics historian and editor David Gerstein notes that, outside the English-speaking world, that might be the most prominent role Hazel is known for. Only one of these comics have ever been published in English. Throughout the 60s, 70s and 80s, she could also be seen intermittently in Spanish, Danish and Brazilian Disney comics. In North America, she featured in a number of sporadic comic issues between the middle 50s and the 1980s. Outside of comics, she appeared in 1968 Little Golden Book, Donald Duck and the Witch, where she attempts to convince Donald that witches are real. And in 1975, Disney issued a newly recorded vinyl adaptation of Trick or treat without original voices. In 1960 and 1961, Little Lulu's Witch Hazel also made two prominent comic appearances in a pair of special Dell Giant comics branded Little Lulu and Witch Hazel. Thanks to the continued use of this Witch Hazel, distributor Western Publishing, who also had the Disney character rights for comics, wouldn't allow the existence of another Witch Hazel in their pages. So in the Disney comics of this era, she regularly appeared as Wonder Witch, The Witch, or simply just go unnamed. This rule likewise stretched over to the Western Looney Tunes comics, where the Warner Hazel went by Old Creaky, Swampy, Swamp Witch, or Wilhelmina Witch. When Gladstone Publishing acquired Disney rights in the middle 80s, Hazel's name was reinstated, while more recent Western comic reprints have restored her rightful name to the masthead. Following Disney's lead, by the early 1960s, the Looney Tunes had also made the transition to television. The Bugs Bunny Show bundled up classic theatrical Warner cartoons and strung them together with newly animated bridging sequences. In an episode titled Bad Time Story, Bugs showcases a series of storybook cartoons, introducing Witch Hazel's first Warner appearance, Bewitched Bunny. As such, Hazel also appeared very briefly in a newly animated segment, which now only survives in black and white. While the original season only ran between 1960 and 1962, Bugs Bunny Show went on to be a long-running series, and Witch Hazel cartoons were regularly featured until the series' conclusion in 2000. In 1963, Witch Hazel made a very quick non-speaking cameo in Transylvania 65000, which sees Bugs lodging at the castle of Count Bloodcount. In one sequence, Bugs uses various magic phrases to rid of Bloodcount, who is pestering him. One such phrase very briefly turns him into Witch Hazel, now depicted in a dark blue dress and with a more grey complexion. Hazel and Foray promptly return for one final Golden Age Looney Tunes in 1966, A Haunting We Will Go. As one of the much maligned Looney Tunes cartoons produced by David H. DePatty and Frizz Freeling, after the closure of the Warner Cartoon Studio, it was produced 
exist in a heavily stylized, low-cost, limited animation, which is evident in Hazel's more primitive design. As Bugs had been retired in 1964, spared from appearing in such shorts animation historian Leonard Moulton would call abysmal, this was a Daffy Duck and Speedy Gonzalez starrer, marking the first and only classic tune where Hazel was paired against anyone other than Bugs. In the cartoon, Hazel, now in a bright blue dress, comes up against the duo, at one point even turning Speedy into a clone of herself so she can escape for a Hawaiian holiday, and at another, attempting to put Daffy into her duck stew. In 1970's Puff and Stuff, the Universal Pictures theatrical prequel to the cult 1969 Sid and Marty Croft series HR Puff and Stuff, a brand new Witch Hazel appeared on the scene, this time in live action. This Witch Hazel, portrayed by pop singer Mama Cass Elliot, was seen as the frenemy of the villainous Witchy Poo and a member of her Witches Council. Just as hideous as the other Hazels, with a long pointy nose and chin and overall grotesque appearance, this one does liven the mood with a bizarre song and dance sequence. In 1977, Warner's Hazel returned in Bugs Bunny's Halloween Special, an hour-long TV package special which repurposed clips from a handful of spooky Looney Tunes cartoons to form a new narrative. Clips from all five of Hazel's appearances were included. Much like Bugs Bunny Show, new linking sequences were animated, including many featuring Hazel. For a returned and even redubbed portions of the older cartoons, however, oddly, B. Benaderet's vocals for Bewitched Bunny were left intact. Similarly, clips from the Disney Trick or Treat cartoon were repurposed in 1983's Disney's Haunted Halloween, an educational film aimed at teaching kids about the holiday, and in 1987 TV special DTV Monster Hits, which compiled clips from various cartoons against a modern rock and roll soundtrack. Foray even returned to provide a new age redub to sections from Trick or Treat. Rhythm and blues, pop and soul, and the lock of air from Billy Joel. <laughs> In Disney's 1988 live-action animated Toon crossover, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, the Disney Hazel briefly appeared during the finale sequence amongst a crowd of Toons. Filmmakers had originally planned to include Warner's Hazel in the film too, during the infamous Pig Head sequence, which was ultimately deleted. The scene is regularly included in home media releases of the film, where she can be seen in rough form, strangely riding Disney Hazel's Beezlebub. Had this scene been left in, Roger Rabbit would have been the first and only instance of the two Hazels crossing over. At least the scene still survives today in some form. Into the 1990s and 2000s, Disney's usage of Witch Hazel became much more prevalent. She made numerous appearances in North American comics, predominantly in Donald Duck Adventures, where Ron Fernandez and Pat Block produced two trick-or-treat follow-ups. Additionally, in 2002, Hazel appeared in direct-to-video Mickey's House of Mouse spin-off movie Mickey's House of Villains. Taking on the variety format of the series, Mickey introduces a number of classic cartoons including Trick or Treat, which opens the movie. Hazel also appears in the audience of Mickey's show throughout. Likewise, Warners continued to use their Hazel predominantly throughout the period. She appeared in two episodes of Animaniacs between 1993 and 1998, including one starring Pinky and the Brain, and another starring Rita and Runt. She additionally featured in Tiny Toons Night Ghoulery, the Tiny Toon Adventures extended finale released in 1995. Here, she starred in a Casper the Friendly Ghost parody alongside Furball. In 1996, she had a sizeable appearance in an episode of The Sylvester and Tweety Mysteries, where the crew arrives at her home thinking it's a boarding house. From the shadows, she slips a love potion into their drink and watches on as all hell breaks loose in classic Hazel style. Also in 1996, she appeared in theatrical live-action animation hybrid feature Space Jam, where she briefly 
briefly cameoed as a cheerleader for the Toon Squad. She was seen here in a traditionally animated design, but with cell shading to give her a 3D appearance. Between 2002 and 2004, she appeared in a handful of Looney Tunes webtoons, mostly in cameos. Her most predominant appearance was 2002's Twick or Tweety, where she kidnaps Tweety and Sylvester to use in her brew. And in 2005, she appeared in Dark Dodgers the series, in a futuristic space set persona, Lisa the Wicked, one of Dodgers' antagonists. This episode marked Foray's final Hazel performance prior to her death at age 99 in 2017. Also across this period, Hazel was utilised in plenty of extended Warner Brothers media. In 1990, she starred as the lead antagonist in the three-part Bugs Bunny comic miniseries that was revealed to be Wile E. Coyote in disguise. In 1991, she similarly appeared as the main antagonist in the Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle 2 video game for Game Boy. And then subsequently, in 1997's Crazy Castle 3 and 2000's Crazy Castle 4 for Game Boy Color. She was additionally featured as a battle character in 2000's Looney Tunes Collector Alert, also for Game Boy Color. She additionally took on the antagonist role in 1999's Bugs Bunny Lost in Time for PlayStation 1, which marked her first appearance in 3D CG form. More recently, she's been featured in the Looney Tunes World of Mayhem mobile game, as has Duck Dodger's Lisa the Wicked. Between 2011 and 2014, Hazel was used as a recurring character in The Looney Tunes Show, a suburban sitcom which saw the tunes revamped as domestic animals. Here, Hazel was presented, again, as Witch Lisa, but with a more traditional appearance. Oh, and if you didn't figure it out already, Lisa is Hazel spelled backwards. With the show utilising newly modernised angular designs heavily inspired by Jones's classic characters, her redesign was less stylized than others. Here, Hazel's personality was no longer insanely over-the-top or zany, but more self-serious, sassy and contentious. She was also given an African-American patois and portrayed by Roz Ryan. Mm. Mm -hmm. That duck's apology list is getting long! While she was now on somewhat more friendly terms with Bugs, she had a combative relationship with Daffy. After so long, she was also finally paired with Jones's Gossamer, specifically depicted as his mother. In the series spin-off movie Looney Tunes Rabbit's Run, she cameos during a musical sequence alongside Lola Bunny. Oddly though, she appears to be Hazel here and not Lisa. Similarly, in a 2017 episode of the DuckTales reboot, Disney introduced their own new variant of Hazel. In this Halloween special, Huey, Dewey, Louie and their cousin Webby go trick-or-treating to Hazel House, the most haunted house in Duckburg, where they meet a now avian version of the character voiced by Selma Blair. Oddly, this Hazel seems to have more in common with the Warner version, with green skin and more villainous disposition. Aside from this variant, Disney's usage of their classic witch Hazel in more recent times is entirely bound to comics. She continues as a long beloved character in European comics, though regularly appears in the current slate of comics in North America, particularly in the Uncle Scrooge comics and usually within a roster of Disney witches. In more recent years, the Tom and Jerry show saw MGM's Hazel inspired witch make a brief comeback in three episodes between 2019 and 2021. Here, much like the others, she appears in a number of sequences parodying classic witches. She's voiced by Grey Griffin. Warners, however, continue to be freer with their usage of Hazel in visual media, with her character over time essentially having become more popular and recognisable than the Disney version, to Western audiences at least. She was returned to her traditional depiction in a number of new Looney Tunes episodes between 2019 and 2020, though in a newly stylized design and voiced by new official voice artist Candy Milo. Here she was seen up against Bugs Bunny in a series of gag-laden sketches, though was once paired up with Porky Pig. In 2020's Animaniacs reboot, she briefly appeared in her classic design in a musical sequence. In the recent Looney Tunes cartoon series, an homage to the golden age of Warner Animation, Hazel made a brief appearance in 2020's short Happy Birthday Bugs Bunny. However, in 2022, she starred in Hex Appeal, presented as part of the series Hello Scream 
Spooktacular. The cartoon sees a classically designed Hazel, though in the style of cartoonist Ronald Searle, discovering that she has grown more attractive in old age. Attempting to brew an uglifying potion, she struggles to capture her final ingredient, a spider. Notably, this is not only Hazel's first ever headline cartoon, but the first that doesn't star her against a loony star, allowing her to finally relish in the spotlight all for herself. Whether you see the Hazels as separate or as different iterations of the same character, it's great to see her continuing to survive in some way all this time later, particularly as one of the greatest curios in cartoon history. Though I would personally love to see the OG Disney Hazel make a cartoon comeback sometime soon. But how about you? I want to know what is your favourite version of Hazel and where would you like to see her go in the future? Join the conversation in the comments below and let me know. If you'd like to watch more evolutions, check the playlist on your screen.